who have been there for this item and have had the room, we can continue and uh, if you want to carry on chatting, we'll be much better, sorry, we'll be much better outside, okay? If that's okay, thank you very much. We have business to go on with. And the next one is item seven, so we'll go on. Um, you're going to present this one. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Council of Bogle requested this application be taken out of delegation and qualified petition objections being been received. Uh, petition support has also now been received. Uh, the application was subject to a member's site visit uh, yesterday. The proposal is for the eventual agreement over extension of 52 week drive. Submitted plans also include the conversion of the roof from a hip gable together with the side and rear extension. However, all the development certificates have determined that these are permitted development and therefore do not require planning permission. Therefore, no planning control of these parts of the development and only the appropriate zone should be assessed. And 52 Eaton Drive has seven tap bungalows located in Greenbelt. To either side and to the front are of other dwellings with bungalows and two storey houses. The adjoining property, 50 Eaton Drive, was previously extended with a front rear doorway, and there are other examples of rear doors within the area. The rear doorway will not be visible on the streets in Eaton Drive and therefore not impact on the character of the area. The proposed rear door will be set in approximately 0.8 metres from the boundary with number 15 drive, 0.8 metres from the rear wall, and set significantly lower than the reach height of the property. In terms of the impact on residential amenity, the doorway is typical of most rear door extensions in that the windows directly face the rear garden of the application property itself. The property is located within an area where first floor rear windows and similar arrangements are not at all uncommon. The adjoining property itself has a rear door, and therefore the same phase going to intrusion or loss of privacy for not for refusal. The site of the green development will provide the policy GV5 in terms of the increase in practical floor space. The proposed extension not considered to be detrimental to the openness of the green belt. Overall, it's considered that the proposal will not have an unacceptable adverse impact on the immediacy of neighbours, the character of the street, or the openness of the green belt, and the application is therefore recommended for approval, subject to these last conditions. Okay, um, I'm aware that we have a petition of objection. You know? Okay. Just one of each. Okay, right. right. There is a petition of objection of 69, 68 names, I'm told. And there's also a petition of support of 101 signatures which has been received and is on the late list. It's also a amended petition. So, does the petitioner of objection wish to speak to the committee? No. No. Can we allow the petitioner for support to speak? Okay, can does someone from the petitioner of support wish to speak? Can you give your name and address? That would be very kind. You have five minutes and I'll let you Hi, good evening Chair and Members, I am Tom Kirby, my address is 52 Eaton Drive. I am the applicant and also the agent for this, it's my own house. In my years at Deco Architects... I'm quiet. Sorry. So, he's also the agent and the applicant and also the petitioner. Well, in that case, provided there is a petitioner support, he's speaking um, okay, that's qualified. Thank you. Can carry on saying something. If it's too much, I don't mind not speaking. No, it's all right. Carry on. Um, in my many years at Big Architects, I worked with this council to provide social housing and preserve historic buildings across our borough. However, tonight I'm here to talk to you about the household application for a dormant and rear or home on Eaton Drive. I am rural born and bred, as is my wife and our sons. We moved to Thornton Hill for our boys to access clean air and green fields. The only available houses in the area are completely unaffordable for most hard-working families like ourselves. We waited for something viable to come onto the market. It has been a long wait. The last house sold on Eaton Drive was eight years ago. Eventually, our only option was the updating of an empty bungalow. I could go into great detail of how a small improvement to our modest home complies with the letter and spirit every applicable local and national policy. However, that is written in black and white in the independent report compiled by the Rural Metropolitan Borough Council. The report is categoric in support of our application. 
There is no impact upon street scene. There is no impact upon green belt. There is no impact upon immunity. The result of this application is to provide a home to a rural family to improve the sustainability, energy efficiency and quality of the borough's built environment. <coughs> The statutory determination date for this application was in December of last year. Following a positive pre in August and extensive consultation, written correspondence to the proposal was going to be recommended for approval was received in the first week of the new year. With just two objections in the consultation period and no input or any response to my emails from the board councillors, there was no expectation that this household application would be taken out of delegated powers. Subsequently, with the already approved works to replace the roof underway, work on the door will commence mid-January as we are fully expecting the decision notice to arrive in the post any day. Two weeks later, Paul Hull took our application to county <coughs> level. By then, we had unfortunately crossed the Rubicon with the construction of the doorman. We needed a roof over our heads. I regret the schedule of events and my haste. However, I hope that members of this council will sympathise with the situation my family found ourselves in. As discussed, just a couple of individuals have commented on the application in the statutory two months of consultation. The concern of these objections was addressed with the amended plans. We were happy to compromise and work with our neighbours. The petition and friends' objection of objections solely followed Council Bobble's involvement. She described the proposal for a rear dormer as completely out of character with the rest of the properties in Eaton Drive. It is overdevelopment of a small plot. To put this in statement into context, there are already 49 dormer conversions on Eaton Drive and the adjoining rows of Fournier Estate. 49. They are on back elevations, side elevations and even front elevations. Dormers are the character of the area. Our adjoining neighbour, the principal objector, even has two dormers herself. In respect to size, one neighbour has a 57% floor area to plot ratio, which is the original design of the estate. By contrast, we now have just a 37% ratio. Our home is far smaller, for example, than our next door but one neighbour, and we also have less than two thirds of the development density of similar properties on the estate. Furthermore, the floor area of our house has only increased by a quarter rather than the 50% which has been permitted under council rules. Four minutes ago, sir. To summarise, the basis of the petition and Council Pobble's objection is demonstrably untrue. It has no basis in planning policy. It fails to recognise the much needed contribution of targeted sustainable development in our borough. I thank the panel for the time and the service to our community. We hope that you and your colleagues accept the recommendation for approval presented by your officers. Tonight, my wife and I look forward to casting your vote in favour of decent family housing that our borough so clearly needs. Um, okay, so I'm now going to bring in the ward councillor. And just for the record, Jay, do uh, David. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm here as the ward councillor to represent 68 residents who signed the petition objecting to this planning application. I need to point out that there has been a considerable amount of intimidation in relation to this application. As you are aware, this application involves the building of a three-bedroom house on the footprint of a small semi-detached bungalow. I know from your previous speaker the extension already built bears no relationship whatsoever to the size of any other door or window in Eaton Drive. They're all much, much smaller. This is the size of a full-size house, as you have seen those that visited yesterday. This application has caused a great deal of distress to the residents of Eaton Drive, in particular those who are situated by the site. The elderly lady in number 50 <laughs> has suffered particularly badly in that it has had a major effect on her health as well as her home. She has lost natural daylight completely from her life and about 70% of the light able to enter her conservatory. Her property is completely overlooked and she has no privacy, as I'm sure you could all see that yesterday. She has cracks all across the walls in her bungalow, and now to add to her misery, she has an ingress of water into her lounge, which relates to the slates in the wrong position on this building. It is a terrible position to find yourself in at the age of 84, when you are just getting on with your own life and not interfering with anyone else. I know she has had extensive correspondence with the local MP, 
Alice and the Good about her situation. There are, however, further objections apart from this problem situation. This is a complete overdevelopment of this sand and a particular eyesore. It is completely out of keeping with the other bungalows in Eden Drive. According to a document produced by the North West Development Agency, Thornton Hoof is designated an area of special landscape value. It was originally designated in November 1980, and I can't find anything to say that this position is altered despite the, despite the demise of the MWDA. As part of the Merseyside Structure Plan, it was given this protective designation to preserve the character and appearance of the landscape and ensure that the that unsympathetic proposals were refused. Policy LA1 of this document provides for the protection of the character and visual appearance of the area. Secondly, all the land in Thornton Hoof Parish is designated Greenbelt, and there is a general assumption, as I am sure you are aware, against inappropriate development. Policy GB3 states about the reuse of buildings in the Greenbelt. This states that the conversion or change of use will be permitted, provided that, or amongst others, the proposal does not involve extensive external storage, extensive hard standing, vehicle parking, intrusive boundary wall fencing, or introduce intrusive domestic elements, particularly the creation of residential curtilage. And form, bulk, and general design are in keeping with their surroundings. Policy G5 states that extensions to existing dwellings in the Greenbelt should not have a harmful visual impact on its surroundings and should be in keeping with the existing dwelling. This extension is clearly not in keeping with the existing dwelling. Councillors, I would suggest that this building does not meet any of the above criteria and I would ask that this application is refused at the request of 68 residents of Thank you. Okay, thank you, Okay, um, so the, just to pick up that this would be our extension is considered to be inappropriate development within the green belt. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, that they, they would be, you know, there is a strict policy for cost extension. I think Council Bogle referred to the end GB5, so it wouldn't be subject to GB3 or GB5 on those extensions. As people know from the site visit, the extension has permitted uh, development rights. We were looking specifically at the design and, and uh, context of, the, of the, the dormer. So I will open it up to members um, to, to contribute. Councillor Kenny or Brian, as I know. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I've read the reports and I went on the site visit yesterday. Now, as I understand it, um, a lot of the work that's already taken place does not require planning permission, so we as a committee would not have a role in that. So am I right in thinking that really what we're talking about is a proposal to the to erect the window in the in the door then? Um, and also what while I was leaving the site yesterday, I did notice it did appear to be many similar dormer windows in, in, in this particular room. And the other point here, I'm not sure whether it's something that we, we can discuss on a planning committee. But I was concerned to hear the local councillor refer to intimidation on this issue. Now, I presume that's not only a planning consideration, but I am concerned to hear that, that made as part of the, uh, the application. And on other things such as cracks across the walls, again, I would have thought that that wouldn't be uh, within the responsibility of this planning committee to consider as part of the application. But overall, Chair, I haven't attended the, the site business, and read all the documentation and listened to the discussion tonight, I'm certainly managing to support the application. Thank you, Chair. Any other members? Uh, Dewey? Thank you, Chair. Um, unfortunately, as uh, the deputy, I, I didn't go to the site visit, and I just wondered if you could, if you have any drawings where you could show us um, in particular um, how number um, 52 has overlook from the 50. Okay, while you do that, has there any other contributions from members? Yeah, Mary. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I do actually have a lot of reviews and a lot of event to date when everybody's had their say. Um, there are dorms on the other um, houses in Thornton and Bluff. however, they are much, much smaller than this. 
rather large dome to say the very least, and I think you'll see for yourself there. And I'm very sorry, I might sound emotional, but I'm very sorry that this committee cannot take into account the fact that the old lady that lives next door has been put through such pain by the fact that her house is in such a state. Well, the second point, yeah, we've met, we've met, we all met the old lady on the site, and we're not we're human beings, we have sympathy. Um, and, but most of the issues that, that the lady was referring to uh, were, were not planning issues. I think that the major issue is this issue of overlooking or out of character. Certainly, every single house in that row overlooks each other's garden. That's the nature of having a rear window to your house. I would say that the, the application is more modernistic, but is that a bad thing? Because we are in modern times and we are building buildings to different standards now. So over time, as people renovate their properties, they will be built in more modernistic materials and have modernistic design. So my view is that you know, overlooking would be very hard to, to improve on appeal, as everyone overlooks of everybody. And I did have, we did have something to think about it. And, and if there's issues during the construction that have damaged their property, that's quite clearly a civil matter, not a matter for, for the committee. But uh, you know, to say we haven't, we haven't got sympathy, we are human beings, Mary, and, and I think that's slightly unfair. I want to bring one in who's raised his hand, and Tony, and then. Yeah, I was looking at that for what you said, Chair. I, I've yeah. attended the site visits and public, and, and as you say, every property in the that block overlooks. Uh, with a dome and an act, and this dome does not, it's not a truce on the next to the property that you should have got. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've got a very reason to agree with this. Mike, I don't think Julie can be asked the very I can't see you, Steve. I'm not going to happen. So, I'll give you. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I mean, from what I can read, reading through the documents and looking at that here, um, number 50 has already extended over the years as a neighbour, um, both to the rear and the side from, from the papers. Um, and I think, as you've already highlighted, in this um, day and age when people need to extend, um, you know, um, in lines with the way that we like to live nowadays, and I think that it's very difficult for young families especially stepping onto the housing ladder, um, you know, to move up. So, I don't mind to us saying anything different um, to approve. Thank you. Uh, David, and then, do you want to read out your views? Yes, thank you. Oh, tell, sorry, tell me. Uh, tell me, Councillor, tell me Jones first, then you, David. Thanks, Chair. Thanks ever so much. Um, Aaron Edward Reports have been on the site visits. Um, I think it's fair to say that they're not unusual. Um, Aaron Edward Reports have been on the site visits. Similar arrangements, not uncommon, no adverse impact, and the report mentions full compliance with all the requirements. And we've just been told that in that immediate area there are 49 dormant conversions actually on Eden Drive, so I can see no valid reason to refuse Okay, now David. Thank you, Chair. Uh, having gone on the site visit, um, I thought it was a difficult one because there's no question about it, that very large dormant is out of character with the area. But that's the subjective opinion, it has to be. The dormant next door, which is at the property of the lady who was mostly concerned, is set far further back into the building line of the properties than this particular dormant, which is quite dominant, extending into the garden much further. You can't see that unless you see it on site as the index of the property or through. So I must admit I was concerned about the nature and extent and the active character facilities that, that it presented to me as a builder. But having said that, I can't see a reason for refusal that would be sustained as appeal unless uh, Mary can come up with something of that nature. I'm not happy with it, Chair, because I didn't like it. That far out of character with the local facilities and the local property in the area. But, uh, I must admit, it sounds difficult to me to put not amount of reasons that would be sustainable as a people. But I'll listen to Mary. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Are members happy then if we ask Mary to read out her reasons for refusal? Yeah. Yeah. So if, if yes, then we can move to the Thank you, Chair. These are my reasons for refusal. It is not at the scale of the late going to surrounding property, in particular with respect to existing densities 
on formal development contrary to policy HS41 and results in a detrimental change in the character of area contrary to policy HS42. Okay, thanks. Very good. Yeah, sorry, I've got to bring back you in because we have to make sure this vote goes through. We are able to defend it. So that's is, is that okay? No. no. Okay. The policies that you've referenced are in relation to new housing development, yeah. not extensions. So you need to reference policy HS11, which relates to house extensions. Um, we wouldn't be able to defend that reason um, if it went to appeal, because it, it, it's not the relevant policy. Right, so can I rewrite it with HS11? I mean, what? Well, yeah, I don't know whether it's new realize this, but we are a webcast. We are the window to the world that developers out there. And we've, this is the second time now we've had half-baked, frankly, uh, reasons for refusal. So I, I'm, I'm asking people to be a lot more professional about the way they conduct themselves on this committee and, and do the research properly and have the right reasons for refusal uh, that can be tested. Because you're, you're, you know, ultimately, one of us may end up in a public inquiry trying to defend the indefensible. I'm, I'm, I'm making a plea here on behalf of the border and the image of the border. People want to invest in this border. The first thing to look at is the planning committee, quite frankly, and uh, at the moment we're not looking pretty good. So, um, okay, so you've got, we are well, likely to want to your reason for refusal, which on the advice of the officers, um, but really, um, um, yeah, okay, the, the officers have agreed to be great, but. Um, you can see where I'm coming from, maybe. Okay. So, has Mary got a second then? Okay. Okay. All those in favour of Mary's reasons for refusal, please show. And those against? Assessment of the scheme is included in the officer's report, but it's important to note that the merits of the application 
have been assessed before an appeal and deemed acceptable by the planning inspectors. Should therefore only be the technical issue of securing the affordable housing provision which is to be considered. As with the previous application, the affordable housing provision will be wiped by way of community sum with the applicants having acquired vacant building credits. The MPPF indicates that where vacant buildings have not been abandoned and the site has been redeveloped, any affordable housing contribution due should be reduced by a proportionate amount. In this instance, the proposed floor space represents a 7% increase on the existing floor space. The affordable housing provision should therefore only be 7% of what it otherwise would have been. This equates to a sum just over £9,000. Yeah, on this basis, the case is recommended for approval subject to Section 106 agreement and the tax conditions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Neil. Well, as I understand it, there are two qualifying petitions in relation to this application. But well, I just need to clarify that we wouldn't normally allow um, both petitioners to speak for up to five minutes. So can I ask if between the two petitions whether it's been agreed that one person will speak? And do you wish to speak? Yeah, I think I think I might be saying unless I get legal advice to the contrary that you can share the time, but it must be up to a maximum of five minutes. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so if, if each person would speak for up to two and a half minutes, that would be acceptable. Yeah, and yet yeah, you should actually both speak on different issues relating to the application. Is that okay? Well, there seems to be a change in policy because the previous two applications no, have both been entitled to speak for five minutes by the no, chairperson. No, no. And, but yeah, that is no, what I, my, my understanding. I was here, I spoke for five minutes. My understanding is that where there's more than one petition. They allow the both to speak for five sorry, minutes. Sorry, to clarify, my understanding is that where there's more than one petition. Um, each petitioner will not be allowed to speak up to I understand minutes. that, but it's within your wherewithal to be tolerant and allow both of us to speak. How, can they, how so, can they organise who doesn't overlap no, their... Well, I don't want a, a, a debate with the audience about this. And my understanding is that legally there's a, an overall entitlement for up to five minutes. So, so if there's two petitions, the last time, so if there's two petitions and you want to speak for two and a half minutes each, that's fine. So can somebody come forward, please? It's very short. Okay, but as I said, there will be a total of five minutes. If you can give your name, please, then. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amy Wilson, and I'm a resident of Ashton Drive. Good evening. This is the third planning application for the Ashton Court site, following two unanimous planning committee rejections. The first two applications were submitted by Starfish Commercial Fit Limited, the third by Hillary Homes. Both companies are affiliated to Magenta Living, and all applications have been identical in the structural site plans. <clears throat> the planned development is clearly overcrowded and overbearing. It would spoil the character of the area with considerable loss of privacy to neighbours. There are completely inadequate parking spaces provided, only 14 for the proposed 14 houses. 12 out of which are three bedrooms. The SP default parking standard calculation is for a maximum of 27 spaces. Any fewer must not cause adverse impact on the safety and immunity of existing residents due to overspill parking. There is also a failure to conform to building separation distances in front of the There have been further increase in traffic and curbside parking at the junction of the site due to the introduction of new two-hour parking bay restrictions on Banks Road last year. The access for the proposed housing on both sides of Ashton Drive is only 20 metres from the Banks Road Junction. The junction is a frequent pedestrian crossing site, including many elderly residents and walking buses of sizeable groups of very young children up to four times a day from the next road opposite. The High Rates Authority have not given any reason <coughs> for their lack of concern about this issue. The coincidental change of the site designation from Greenfield to Brownfield in 2017, a decision outside the National Planning Framework excluding stipulations with Brownfield designation, has conveniently led to the developers effectively being given money to assist in building this development. It has greatly reduced their contribution to affordable housing elsewhere, but a rise of sum of just over £9,000 is now required. In summary, the plan is simply overbearing and greedy and would likely receive 
far fewer objections if the plans are scaled back to take this into account. These breaches of policies and regulations and unanswered questions have not been addressed. It is the clear wish of all of the signatories of both petitions and all residents who submitted <coughs> objections that this application does not succeed. We urge you to reject this application. Okay, thank you very much. So we now invite the speaker on behalf of the other petition to, to talk now. And can, can just point out that you've got 2 minutes 35 seconds left. Thank you. My name is Alan Rundle and my address is 126A Banks Road, West Perth. Press the buttons so people can see. Oh, yeah. Where's the button? Press in the middle, little sign. Thank you. My name is Alan Rundle and my address is 126A Banks Road, West Perth. Since this application is identical to the two previous ones, the consultee comments, concerns and objections apply equally to this application. The lead local flood authority, the LLFA, objects to this application and recommends refusal of planning application with punishment, contrary to what's printed in the Ashton Court agenda under the heading consult consultations. I quote from an email sent by the lead local flood authority to Neil A. Williams with the subject given as application APP 18 01625 Ashton Court consultation response dated 10th of January 2019. It states, the lead local flood authority object to this application and recommend refusal of planning permission, adding the proposed scale of development may present risks of flooding on site and or elsewhere if surface water runoff is not effectively managed. The LLFA also states that there is no information whether the system will be in private ownership or offered for adoption who will be responsible for maintenance and how maintenance of the unadopted communal components will be secured and funded in perpetuity. The LLFA further adds, in the absence of this information, the surface water flood risk resulting from the proposed development is unknown, and this is therefore sufficient reason in itself for a refusal of the planning commission. The council's website shows that there were seven bodies consulted concerning this application. The LLFA one has been seen to recommend refusal of the planning commission. I've given some of the LFA's reasons. The World Society consulted, was consulted. In a communication to Ms. N. Williams dated 9th of January 2019, the World Society writes, the World Society objects to this repeat, repeat application. Reasons given for the objection include, one, the states surely refurbishment is possible and less costly and would maintain the green space that's under threat from this application at the centre of Banks Road. The NPPF um, definition of previously <coughs> Developed land, aka brownfield sites, specifically excludes land and built up areas such as private residential gardens. GRE1, the Council's Urban Green Space Strategic Policy, is focused on the protection of urban green space. This plan application proposes to cover urban green space with concrete, tarmac, bricks, and mortar. Um, the NPPF definition of affordable housing states that affordable housing should include provisions to remain at an affordable price for future eligible households or for the subsidy to be recycled for alternative housing provision. It's not clear that the applicant has made any commitment to guarantee that future eligible households will receive any subsidy or that the planning department has addressed the issue. So you can wind up now, please, for yeah. the five minutes. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, let's see. Therefore, Ashton Court does not qualify as a brownfield site and should be removed from the Council's Register of Brownfield Sites. Ashton Court is not actually given confirmed status on the Council's Brownfield Site Register, and as a consequence, this application does not qualify Sorry, it's now for the subsidy of vacant building credit you. of £9,291 to be paid by the Council to the applicant. Thanks. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Can I ask now the applicant or the agent is present and if they wish to speak? Yeah? Okay, again, if you can give your name, please, and so you can address the committee for up to five minutes. Thank you. Sorry, that correct. Um, good evening. My name is Richard Merrills. I am uh, an architect with Watson Batty Architects. I'm the agent for the application. Hilda Homes are a new build development company, but not a typical house builder. It was set up as a joint venture between Magenta Living, who are based in the world, and Starfish Commercial, who are a high quality housing contractor. 
The, uh, the aim of Philbrick Homes is to provide new homes for sale and market rent, whilst charitably reinvesting 60 pence in every pound towards local community initiatives. The site is owned by the applicant and was considered for refurbishment through a conversion as part of a detailed stock condition survey back in 2007. The study found the internal layout and condition was not conducive to conversion to a more appropriate residential offer for the area. This new build proposal is now, now forms the third plan application. The first two were approved for different reasons which have been discussed earlier. The first one was related to design, relating to 